Tom Hartman here on the news. You need to know this. After last week's historic Prop 8 ruling, same-sex couples in California were told they would have to wait at least 25 days to get married. However, Attorney General Kamala Harris asked the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals to speed things up and allow people to marry sooner. And that's exactly what the court did. On Friday afternoon, the three-judge panel issued a one-sentence ruling which said, the stay in the above matter is dissolved effective immediately. The news of the 10-word ruling spread rapidly, and couples flocked to city halls across the state to get married, including the two couples that brought the Prop 8 case. Attorney General Harris married Kristen Perry and Sandra Steyer in front of a crowd of hundreds, and Paul Katami and Jeff Zarillo were wed on live television in a ceremony led by Los Angeles Mayor Antonio Villarosa. Both couples had waited over four years and fought through lengthy legal battles for the right to exchange vows. Opponents of marriage equality called the Ninth Circuit's decision an outrageous act because those opponents hadn't announced whether they would ask the Supreme Court to reconsider last week's ruling. Typically, they would have 25 days to petition the court to reverse its decision. But state officials celebrated the news and refused to back down to the anti-gay marriage crowd. Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom tweeted, Love will rule the weekend. Congratulations to all those planning to get married. After a four-week delay, or four-year delay, the weekend was full of love and celebration in California. Congratulations to all the happy couples. In Screwed News, recently we heard about a fast food worker who was being paid via a prepaid Chase debit card, which includes multiple fees that cut into her minimum wage income. Now we find out that she isn't alone. According to the New York Times, more and more low-wage workers are being subjected to the same problem. Companies throughout our country are no longer offering paychecks or direct deposit. And employees are instead forced to accept prepaid debit cards, which charge low-wage workers fees for taking out cash, checking on their balances, or even requesting a paper statement. These workers are already burdened by the struggle of trying to survive on a little more than $7 an hour, and now some are getting hit with fees of up to $60 a month, to use their own money. After factoring in those fees, these workers aren't even making minimum wage. Big banks like Chase, Bank of America, and Citigroup are taking money from those who can least afford it, and their employers are demanding that, and these workers are demanding that employers pay them with an actual check. In the best of the rest of the news, according to the International Energy Agency, renewable energy will soon be the second largest energy source worldwide. They report that in the next five years, renewable sources will be more common than natural gas. The IEA points to lowered cost as a major factor in the switch to renewable sources. As coal and other fossil fuels become more costly, hydro, wind, and solar power are catching on, even in developing countries. In fact, the only nations that are not seeing huge growth in green energy are among the developed nations. And that's probably because of global subsidies to the fossil fuel industry in those developed nations. President Obama's recent climate speech addressed those subsidies and called for increased investment in renewable sources. The president pledged to double our nation's wind and solar energy production and allow green energy development on public lands. The International Energy Agency says that by 2018, renewable sources will make up a quarter of the world's energy. Perhaps we can expedite that process by continuing our push to move away from fossil fuels and towards green energy. Texas lawmakers are going to take another pass at restricting abortion in their state. Texas Governor Rick Perry has announced another special session to try to impose a 20-week abortion ban on women in his state. But pro-choice advocates are working to make last week's protests and 11th hour filibuster look like child's play. Already, 5,000 people have signed up to join a Stand with Texas Women rally to expand on last week's fight to protect a woman's right to choose. Thousands say they were inspired by State Senator Wendy Davis for standing up for over 11 hours to protect women in her state. Senator Davis was interviewed on ABC's This Week and said that she refused to give up on this important fight. She said, I believe in people. I believe in the power of democracy, and I am going to fight with every fiber I have to keep the anti-abortion measure from passing. End quote. It looks like she'll now have thousands more Texas residents standing with her they are not going to let lawmakers restrict women's rights without a fight. And finally, New York City held its annual Gay Pride Parade this Sunday, and one special guest was a highlight at the celebration. Democratic mayoral hopeful Anthony Weiner was in attendance, and partygoers had a bit of fun with wordplay. Several parade viewers carried signs saying, Weiner! and carried pictures of the now 
of the former representative's now infamous photo that led to his resignation in 2011. Despite the previous scandal, New Yorkers welcomed the mayoral candidate with cheers of, We love Wiener, and you can quote us on that! Obviously, their words had more than one meaning in a gay pride event, but Anthony Wiener didn't miss a beat in joining with their festivities. He shared some back-and-forth jokes with the crowd and said, You guys know that's my name, right? Anthony Wiener may not be a favorite among the religious, anti-gay crowd, but it appears he's got strong support from the gay male demographic. And that's the way it is today, Monday, July 1st, 2013. I'm Tom Hartman on the news.